radar, miracle weapon of World War II. Two United States Navy civilian scientists, Dr. A. Hoyt Taylor, chief of electronics research, and his assistant, Leo C. Young, contributed to its development. Fifty years of worldwide research in radio and television, plus the basic discoveries of these men, went into the cathode ray tube, the heart of radar, which measures time in millionths of a second and translates those measurements into vital military information. In operation, a stream of electrons flows through the cathode ray tube and appears on its fluorescent screen as a visible dot. Voltage variations make this dot move slow or fast. Speed it up, it moves so fast that it appears to trace a single solid line known as the time base. The time that it takes the dot to trace this line is exactly calculated in spotting a target. When the radar antenna sends out its pulses, they bounce back from the unknown target, and the result is seen as a peak on the radar screen. Reading this pattern, the distance and speed of an approaching plane are charted. A radar-equipped airplane on patrol picks up a large ship to its left, then a smaller ship to its right. The peaks on the screen correspond. Broadside, a ship looks larger than it does head on. Nearing land masses, these also are detected. The radar screen does not show actual pictures as in television, but its images are accurately interpreted by trained operators. A Navy scout plane detects the presence of an enemy fleet. The American fleet's guns could destroy these ships from great range without ever actually seeing them. Army anti-aircraft defenses around an industrial center constantly send out radar pulses. Defenses like this helped win the Battle of Britain. Enemy target detected. The pulses echo back. Directional antenna point their beams directly at the enemy. From the receiving antennae, elaborate machines which are part of a complex warning system, word is flashed to the central control station. From here, searchlight and anti-aircraft batteries get their orders. Clearly followed, even in darkness, the plane comes near. Searchlights snap on. The enemy is pinpointed. Automatically aimed, the guns fire. This development, which greatly reduced the element of total surprise in war, will in peacetime play a vital role in sea and air navigation. The mysteries of shorelines, of harbors, of bad weather can be all but overcome with the aid of instruments which, using one of many types of radar, can actually draw a map of unseen terrain. The fog-bound pilot, coming into land, was once at the mercy of bad visibility, even with the best radio equipment. Now, through radar-equipped airport control stations, he is brought in safely. The plane loses altitude, danger of a crash. But the control tower, following the plane perfectly, gives warning in time. Instructions go out for a safe landing. Radar, the most revolutionary weapon since the airplane, is only eclipsed in its significance for war and peace by the atomic bomb. Like both the plane and the bomb, it is a product of American and allied science. The free world has reason to be thankful for the freedom of its scientific thought.